Social media is always blowing up with some new diet fad promising to change your life and transform your health. It was the first time that I'd really understood that food could potentially have a powerful effect. Paleo, keto, alkaline, eating clean, you name it, insert name here, diet. Is there actually anything to them? Or is this, a lot of this is just BS. If you want to be really healthy, is it time to ditch the diets? Even from time to time, I get caught in the latest craze. I mean, trying to shred for summer, you've seen my, my bear pics. <laughs> but sometimes it's hard to tell the facts from the fat. Miracle diets claiming to be based on science have been around for decades. But now new food books and social media are taking this to a whole new level. One of the diets that's been going around a lot is clean eating. I mean, clean eating alone on Instagram has 48 million posts. So what's this all about? Should we all be eating clean? So what does clean eating even mean? A lot of it's about, you know, cutting out refined sugars and processed meat, eating a lot of veg, and sometimes even cutting out meat altogether. And this sounds pretty good, right? Vegetables could be amazing things and they could have an impact on you that I would never even consider. The person who was dubbed the queen of clean who became a major face in this movement is Deliciously Ella, who managed to transform her life from making a number of changes to her diet and lifestyle. I had problems with my immune system and infections and then chronic fatigue. So I spent about six months or so in bed just taking all these drugs and they just didn't have enough effect. She, like many others, has gone completely plant-based in order to improve her health, an idea which stems from one book. The first book that I read was The China Study by Colin Campbell, which for me was really interesting. It was the first time that I'd really understood that food could potentially have a powerful effect. What we learned was that diets that contain more animal proteins is associated with increase in cancer rates and heart disease rates. To get these results, Professor Campbell looked at 6,000 people in China, but instead of measuring their animal product intake, he actually measured their cholesterol levels. We had to look at it somewhat indirectly and comprehensively, and we learned, for example, that blood cholesterol was a pretty good indication. And that, in turn, was associated with the consumption of more animal protein. So what he did here was use cholesterol levels as a measure for a disease. But we know cholesterol levels can be affected by many different things. So it's a real leap to say that animal products are completely bad for you. What I say, this is the goal. And the reason I say it's the goal is not because we have all the science in. I just simply say this is the goal because as we proceed in that direction, I don't see harm occurring. So basically what the science is saying is we should eat more vegetables. Agreed but not to necessarily completely cut out an entire food group. The science is actually pretty complex, and your problem with complex is it doesn't often sell as well or come across as sweet on social media. And this is where we can get in trouble by running away with facts. And this is something that Ella agrees with too. For me, plant-based is about based. Do you see what I mean? And therefore you add on to it, you know, adapt it. It's about sharing recipes that start with a base of plants rather than it saying you can never do this ever again, which is not what I'm about by any shape or form. My problem with the word clean is that it's become too complicated, it's become too loaded. Clean is now implies dirty and that's negative and we shouldn't have that. And I think it's sad to me that clean has been taken so far out of, I think, how it was originally meant to be used by people. As I said, I haven't used it, but as far as I understood it when I first read the term, it meant natural, you know, kind of unprocessed. And now it doesn't mean that at all. It means diet, it means fad. Like we know, diets come and go. And me, myself, I've been attracted to those get shredded quick diets to get ready for holiday. However, I've also seen the other side when dieting goes wrong. Sometimes studying these diets and taking them too seriously can have its own psychological effects. And this can lead to medical conditions such as anorexia and bulimia nervosa, and these are patients that I see in a &E. and Sometimes the way these diets and fads start with real facts and sometimes actual principles can spiral and snowball and get passed around and people can really misinterpret it. And social media is actually amplifying it and changing our relationship to food and this can become dangerous. Even deliciously Ella, who built a massive social media following talking about diets, has been able to appreciate the issues that can happen with social media and how you have to approach it with caution. I think it's up to us to be as responsible as we can be to, to do everything to allow to people not to take it out of context. To me, that doesn't stop at food. That's the whole of social media.
Another recent craze I've heard about in recent years is going gluten or grain free. The idea that apparently cutting out grains makes us healthier. So it's a no brainer, right? Should we all be going gluten free? We've been eating gluten and grain for years. However, the gluten free movement is massive, selling millions of books. I saw too many people succumbing to the need for bypass surgery, stents, dying, sudden cardiac death, etc., heart attacks. So I asked my many patients to remove grains and sugars. Let's see what happens. What he knows seemed too good to be true. Blood sugars dropped. Many diabetics became non-diabetic. Spectacular things happened. Mm, seems like a bit of a leap. Most of the science actually comes from a study in Italy. However, it doesn't exactly back all of Bill's claims. I respect and, and like some of the aspects of Dr. David, so we're, it's not that I, you know, I'm an enemy or whatever, so I'll, of course I'll, I'll be ecstatic if he's right, but the answer is much more complex than you can imagine. He found that gluten could be harmful to the gut in many people, however this is actually people who've already had gut issues. These people tend to be celiac disease sufferers, people I tend to see in hospital. Not everybody who eats gluten will be in trouble. So even the scientists who this movement is based on doesn't completely support it. It seems to be such a no-brainer question, but it's not. I mean, many of these free diets, gluten-free, dairy-free, whatever-free diets, these are only really necessary for people who can't process whatever the intolerance is. And these are patients that I see. So when it comes down to it, three doesn't necessarily mean healthy. So my advice would actually be to make small incremental changes to your body and your lifestyle and your diet. Avoid crash dieting, avoid social media, avoid comparisons with people you don't even know, and just focus on yourself, on your body, doing small things to get better each and every day.